Space weather is the um, dynamic environment in space. So space is not a vacuum like uh, many people uh, think about it. Space is full of electromagnetic radiation. Space is full of charged particles, electrons, protons, heavy ions. And this is all impacted by the sun. So sun is emitting uh, electromagnetic radiation to all directions, as we well know. Uh, but in addition, sun is actually blasting protons, electrons, uh, the phenomena which is called solar wind into space to all directions. The um, Earth is part of space, part of the solar system of course, and when, uh, particularly when the um, charged particle environment changes, then the uh, magnetic uh, field around the Earth actually reacts to these changes. Some of these particles enter inside the magnetic field, they change the conditions inside the magnetic field, and these variations they actually can have some quite dramatic impacts on the infrastructure that we are utilizing in uh, our everyday life. Well, the uh, most dramatic impact that people would immediately notice would be an um, impact on the power grids. So when, the, uh, when we have an event which is called coronal mass ejection, the sun is blasting uh, as a result of a sort of a magnetic explosion uh, on the sun, a vast amount of plasma into space. If this plasma cloud hits the Earth, then it changes the current uh, systems uh, of charged particles inside the magnetic field of the Earth. And this can actually directly induce a current into our power grid. At the moment, we already have in place a system uh, which is providing space weather information to the end users. So we help the uh, people operating the infrastructure to prepare for a pop uh, potential space weather event and try to mitigate uh, and minimize the impacts. In the future, we want to enhance our capability. Um, one of the potential, uh, well, the particular problems that we have today is that we cannot forecast space weather very well. What we want to do in the future is to give better forecasts, the same way as, pe as people get the meteorological forecasts uh, for tomorrow, for three days, for seven days. Uh, Long-term forecasting with space weather is difficult because sun is very difficult to uh, predict very accurately. But at least we hope that we can give uh, advanced warnings when something uh, critical uh, might be developing, and especially when there is a high risk for an extreme uh, space weather event. In order to improve our capability to forecast space weather, we want to have actually two satellite systems outside the magnetic field of the Earth. One point is the L1 point, which is a first Lagrange point, the stable point between the Sun and the Earth, about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth towards the Sun. We want to have there a spacecraft that can provide us information about the propagation of the events from the Sun towards the Earth, and then even more importantly for the forecasting, we would like to put the spacecraft into the fifth Lagrange point, which is a point 150 million kilometers behind the Earth on the same orbit as the Earth. And that would give us a perspective uh, of the Sun before the uh, surface of the Sun is visible to the Earth. Okay, observations from multiple uh, vantage points uh, is of course um, uh, an effort that needs to be made. And uh, if you want to observe from, from different points, then you can, of course, make use of international co collaborations. So one party would fly at one point, and another par party would fly the spacecraft into another point. And if we join the forces, then we can make use of all the synergies, and then it would be much uh, more efficient to implement such a system.